Hi everybody, I'm Philip Goodman from the Nevada Real Estate Group at Keller Williams Group One Inc. in Reno, Nevada. And today I am with Chris McCabe, who is our expert up at Lake Tahoe and State Line, Nevada. How have you been, Chris? I'm doing great, thank you. Talk about your drive over the hill, a little, uh, little white, a little powdery? It was, it was rather exciting. Uh, I had about four inches of fresh snow and it's starting to look like winter and I'm getting excited. And on your way back, you're gonna pull over and hit the slopes? Uh, it could happen tomorrow. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, before we get you uh, into your ski boots, let's get you into MLS nice. and let's take a look at uh, the sales activity in October. It was a little bit light, but uh, you know, many drops make them out of the ocean. So let's take a look inside MLS. So we've already looked at the Incline Village data, and before we do go deep into the State Line and South Tahoe area, my question is, why is everything south of Sand Harbor part of the Reno Sparks MLS? Well, from Incline Village to Sand Harbor to all the way to Glenbrook is all public National Forest Service land. Highway Spooner comes up and meets Glenbrook, which is an exclusive uh, lake community, many houses on the lake, private piers, buoys, and million dollar houses. You head east, south to Lake Ridge, Skyland, Zephyr Cove has some nice condominiums, and uh, ending up around Hill Mall. As you get a little closer to the state line, um, you've got Kingsbury Gray. That, of course, heads up towards Heavenly Ski Area. And there's a lot of uh, neighborhoods off of Kingsbury um, that actually have some flat ground and uh, some nice lots, some nice houses. Well, as we've looked at in previous market reports, Market Insights is a very helpful tool. However, it only covers the Reno Sparks uh, uh, incorporated areas and not all the way up in Tahoe. So here we have pulled specifically the sold properties in October for the, uh, the areas that Chris and I looked at over the map. And Chris, of the 15 properties that sold, a third of that are condos. Well, you know, in this case, condominiums are definitely a little more affordable. And uh, the condominiums in the state line area tend to be higher up the mountain, closer towards the ski area. So as we get closer to the ski skiing time, you know, the ski condos are starting to sell. And as we've talked about every time, the higher the price, the longer the property sits on the market. So when we resort this by price, we see a couple of heavy hitting numbers up here. Yes, there's uh, the one for uh, on, on 746 Lincoln Highway that sold for two and a half million. Was it was built in 1926 and very unique property. The timbers came over from Virginia City and the gold mines, and they were brought over and they built this house and it's right on the beach and it was gorgeous. Took a while to sell it though. But look at this: a six million dollar property moved in half a year. Well, it was priced to move. <laughs> <laughs> that actually happened to be a nice beachfront home as well. So as we also look at the median price uh, here down at State Line, how does this, or can it even compare to what we saw in October for Incline Village? Typically the, the median prices um, are a little bit lower in State Line than they are in Incline. Incline tends to be a little bit more exclusive, uh, but that's not always the case. Uh, it just depends on the, on the home. Previously in Incline Village, we saw the percent of asked received closer to the 97% range, but now we're seeing it at 95% in October down in State Line. And Chris, a, a couple of these properties came down well over $100,000. Is this common? Well, this time of the year, it does happen. There are people that are determined to sell their house before the snow flies, and they'll just take, a, you know, they'll take a drastic reduction in order to do that. And it only takes a few homes at that price point to skew the average. It sure does. Uh, the ninety-five thousand price drop, two hundred and eighty-five thousand, almost two hundred thousand here on McKay, fifty thousand here. So days on market are two eighty-four. So they had it on the market like for a year, and it was time for it to go. So there you have it. That is your October market report for Lake Tahoe State Line, Nevada. If you have any more questions about it, or if you're ready to go see a property down there, you should contact Chris McCabe at the info you see on your screen now. Speaking of uh, State Line and uh, the, the south end of the lake, what's happening down there for New Year's? Uh, well, I'll tell you, New Year's State Line is the place to be. They uh, literally, they shut down the street where the casinos are, and they have live bands and fireworks, and it's, it's a real party. And uh, if you're not into that scene, um, at the village over at Heavenly, there's plenty of restaurants and ice skating and, and other activities. A lot, lot to do. 
Well, hopefully you found this information helpful. And uh, if you did, hopefully you will give it a like and a share on your social media as well. For Chris McCabe, for the Nevada Real Estate Group at Keller Williams Group 1A, I'm Philip Goodman. We'll see you next time.